Hello everybody, I want to make sure that um, uh, this is John Finn, SupernaturalHouseChurch.org and I want to make sure everybody's caught up. I've been receiving a lot of emails uh, and a couple text messages and stuff from people who have been with me for a while who remember uh, a, a, something the Father told me some years ago that I think I released to the public in around 2008, I think he told it to me about 10 or 15 years ago. And it was that there were, uh, this is a prophetic word for the United States, so my apologies to those uh, living around the world elsewhere. But what he said at the time is, is this, I was going to ask him about our nation, where we were going and, and everything. And he said there would be two hurricanes that would hit the United States. And, um, you know, at first I, I thought, okay, maybe Katrina and Harvey were one. I'm recording this live here where Hurricane Harvey has hit Texas. Hurricane Ar uh, Irma is churning in the Atlantic, and we don't know ex the exact direction she's going to go, but I've received so many people who have been with me for a while, so they remember that word. And some people have it off a little bit, their memory, you put words in my mouth and everything. So let me just share. What the Father told me was that there would be two hurricanes that would hit the U.S. The impression was they would be back-to-back. -back. You know, I had wondered for a while if Katrina and Harvey, you know, 12 years apart were it, but nothing resonated with me. But uh, with Harvey and then Irma about to hit perhaps Florida, um, anyway, he told me that there would be two hurricanes that would hit the United States. And the first one would be, would be uh, very expensive, as would the second one. And he said it would come at a time when the Congress had many decisions to make and determining the direction for this nation. And he said after those two hurricanes, we would see an, an earthquake in California. And... Uh, and that would be that would be interesting and 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 devastating and expensive as well. And he said that it would come at a time when the U.S. was already dealing with the great expense of the hurricanes. Uh, and so you know, the, but but you know how it is, Katrina. There's areas still you know 12 years later where they're still dealing with uh, uh, Katrina. So you don't know the time frame of that. And then he said this. He said then will come another earthquake that will occur in an area not normally thought of. As, as prone to earthquakes, not normally thought of as, as having earthquakes. And um, he didn't specify the city, he just said that there would be another earthquake would come. And he talked about the, the economy being affected by this and people being affected by this and, and that there would be many factors contributing. So I share that because so many people have asked, what, you know, what was it again that he said? And they, he said there'd be two earthquake or two hurricanes followed by an earthquake in California, followed by an earthquake uh, in an area not normally uh, that one would associate with having earthquakes. Um, and so anyway, there, there's some other things happening that I, I wouldn't say related to that um, uh, directly, but I wanted to, to share that. I also wanted to share, as, as you know, while I'm talking about this, because people are looking at, at different things, and, and you can, you, I, I share these things on my weekly thoughts, which you can sign up for at our website from supernaturalhousechurch.org. Um, I've also shared, and I want to share, and I'll share in this e-newsletter that's coming out this week, uh, about some things, mo a little more detail about what the Lord said in June when he appeared to me. You'll recall, some of you will recall, I've shared a little bit who are on my mailing list and all that, that um, when I was having my AFib um, and I couldn't breathe uh, late at one night, and it was before, the, you know, realized how bad it had gotten, that it was hindering my my heart flow and, and fluid was building up and I was sitting up in the recliner in the middle of the night. They hadn't yet prescribed Lasix or anything for a diuretic to get rid of it. I hadn't had my, my cardioversion procedure yet. And I was just worshiping the Father and I was telling him, you know, I'm, I, I, I've been to heaven. I, I don't have any fear about going home, but I've, I, it's not the right timing and everything. And suddenly the Lord was there and he appeared to me, he put his left hand on me, said, you'll live and not die. And I've shared that before. And then he shared some other things that would happen between that time and September of 2018. And a lot of it had to do with us and our ministry, the house church network around the world, different things of that nature, uh, finances and things of that nature that were personal that, that aren't for public consumption. But one of the things he said about this fall in the U.S., and he said this, he said, I asked him for a comment. I said, could you just tell me, you know, what you see, I said, I know the Father's asked me to pray for this Congress and pray for the decision-making and everything else uh, in the midst of, of difficult times. But I said, could you comment? Do you have anything to say? And he said this. He said, he said, the Congress, he said, if the Congress does not make right decisions uh, in accordance with what they should be doing, he said, the investors will lose uh, faith in their ability to enact policy. And he said, he said, there will be an economic collapse 
uh, similar to 2008, but larger in scope. He said because the one in 2008 was just bad policy and failing companies. He said, but this involves the president and the Congress and a lack of confidence in the ability for the Congress to, to get his agenda through. And he said the effect will be worldwide. And so that was an interesting prophetic word. That was just from June of this year. So it makes me a little bit, um, I say nervous, just wondering you know, if our prayers are effective, uh, you know, because, you know, like Jonah was told, you know, by the Lord, he's going to destroy Nineveh. And then when he gets there, the Lord changes his mind. And so you're not quite sure on these things. And, but the Lord was, the context was, you know, to pray about these things, that people do the right thing. So there's a lot of wisdom for the government that's, that is um, required, that is needed. I will share a couple other things, as long as I'm talking about prophetic things and things that the Father showed to me, because a lot of people don't, aren't aware of, uh, of this ministry or, or what we've been doing the last few years. Some of you will also recall a time, this was about uh, 15 years ago, when I was complaining to the Father about not having money. <laughs> you know, I'm trying not to get rich in the ministry and I'm succeeding. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, and, and it's, it's uh, sometimes it's so hurtful because people say, I don't have any money and, and everything like that. And we can't do anything. And then you hear them going out to eat and going to, to the movies and taking a vacation and you're thinking, really? And so I was having a pity party, you know, that just sets the stage, to be real honest. I was just having a pity party, and I said, Father, at least, you know, I'd love to have a savings account. I'd like to have some money. You know, we've struggled with handicapped son and uh, everything else all our lives and being in ministry and, and such. And he responded, and I didn't expect him. He said, he said, why do you want to put your money in there? And immediately there was a vision before me, a, like a TV screen, and I saw a bank on like a... Uh, Thursday, I knew in the vision, I knew it was like a Thursday afternoon. It was a Thursday afternoon and people were going about their business normally. And then on Friday, I saw the bank closing early. And then on Saturday, and the, the scene just shifted kind of like a movie shifts uh, scenes. I saw people pounding at the door, glass doors, the banks were closed and they were pounding at the door and screaming, I want my money, I want my money. And then when the banks reopened Monday morning, the US dollar was worth 50% of its value before it had closed on Friday that there was a government move to devalue the dollar. Um, and I thought that was interesting. Of course, that's, you know, at the time, 15 years ago, you know, I didn't know anything about that. I don't know when that's going to happen. I, I didn't know any economic tricks to devalue a currency, you know, to s supposedly then on paper at least slash uh, debt in half. You know, so a $20 trillion debt could be slashed in half. Uh, and called 10 trillion, you know, if you if you devalue the economy. I think that's how it works. I may be backwards on that. But um, I just want to share some of these prophetic things. And, and, and this word, and it, it pertains to you and I personally, that each of us have um, things that the Lord has told us, or we feel that he has promised us. Maybe our children, grandchildren, something about our lives. And prophecy is is really best understood at the time or after the time that it comes to pass. And a great example of this is in Matthew chapter 2, in verses 5, verse 15, and verse 23. In Matthew chapter 2, there are three prophecies about Messiah. The first one says he will, born in Bethel, will be born in Bethlehem. The second one says, out of Egypt have I called my son. And the third one in verse 23 says, he settled in Nazareth that it might be fulfilled that he was be called a Nazarene. So there you have three prophecies about Messiah being from Bethlehem, Egypt, and Nazareth. And if you lived at that time, you'd be saying, how is this going to come to pass? How in the world does this make sense? And it's only after the events happened that you look back and say, oh, he was born in Bethlehem, moved to Egypt for a time, then settled and was raised in Nazareth. Then it makes sense. Well, prophecy is like that as well. And it's like that with our personal lives as well. The Lord can promise things that, that may not come to pass for years or decades or ages or in the next age to come. But uh, but they're, they're best understood at the time of fulfillment or or shortly thereafter. And so a lot of these things that we see, we, we inquire about the how and the why and the when and the where, and we really don't know. But what we have to do is just keep focused on the Lord to, for today. Notice, know that those prophecies are out there and and everything. And then you kind of look for the Lord's mercy in it. A lot of times the Lord will show you the worst case scenario because he will ask his people to pray. And there are different examples like that, like, like Nineveh, for instance, is an example. 
uh, and, 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 and that can change and it can uh, alter things. In fact, one of the best examples, and I'm running out of time, is Matthew 24, 20, where Jesus is prophesying about the Antichrist coming into the temple. And in verse 20, he says, pray that it doesn't happen on a Sabbath. Pray that it doesn't happen during the winter. So that even though the Antichrist appearance in the temple three and a half years into the peace treaty is set in stone, it's been prophesied by Daniel chapter 9, it's been prophesied by Jesus in Matthew 24, 15. But Jesus said, pray, and that word is pray, it means you can change the season of the year and the day of the week that it happens. That's how effective our prayers are. So I, I just appreciate everybody praying not only for the victims of Hurricane Harvey, uh, but uh, praying about whatever happens with Irma and then keep an eye on the U.S. economy and uh, things that would happen. So we should always be praying, always be expecting the Father to show his mercy and his grace and that some of these things can be delayed or stopped entirely. All right, God bless. New, another word next week. Talk to you later.